We teach what we know, but we reproduce what we are. So if you're wanting to raise up some great leaders in your group, guess what? The first thing you need to do is be a great leader. Oh, oh let, let me explain that to you. Let, let me just sit down for just a moment. At my age, it's a highlight. Let me just sit down for a moment and let's go back to the law of the lid. Remember when, when your lid was a five, what was your company going to be? It was going to be a... Absolutely. The lid says you can't have a six. You can't have a seven. You can't have an eight. You can't have a nine. You're a five leader. A five leader doesn't have sevens. A five leader doesn't have eight companies. Five leader doesn't have nine. And five leaders have four companies. What kind of a person will you attract? If you're a five leader, you don't attract sixes, seven, eights, nine, ten. Can I tell you something? Eights don't want to follow five. Eights go meet a five and they say, whoops, Mr. Magoo. So how do you attract better people? Lift your lid. If you're a five, you get fours, threes, twos, and ones. If you're a six, you get five, fours, threes, two. If you're a seven, you get six. If you're an eight, you got this? Stanford Research says, just came from there. Stanford Research says that 85% of everything you know, you learn visually, 85%. The reason I say that the first rule of five in leadership is leading yourself is because visual example is the most powerful leadership tool, acts, acts to cut down your tree. Trust me with that. James Allen, James Allen said, people are anxious to improve their circumstances, but they're not anxious to improve themselves. And they therefore remain bound. The first person that you should teach leadership values to is you. Some of the obstacles you're up against may seem like they have the upper hand. The sickness is bigger. You've had the addiction a long time. Feels like that trouble has you surrounded. But when it's your time, like with them, it's not going to leave gradually. It's not going to improve a little here, a little there. It's going to leave suddenly, like it's in a panic, like it's fleeing for its life. Well, Joel, this sounds encouraging, but I don't believe it's going to happen quickly for me. I've been dealing with this for a long time. You're right. It won't happen for you. This is for believers. This is for people that will let the seed take root. People that will dare say, God, I agree with what you said, that you will hasten your word to perform it. Lord, I believe for a quick work. I believe enemies are hurrying out of my way. I believe I'm going to see a rapid turnaround. A friend of mine worked for this company where his supervisor wasn't treating him right. He was jealous of him. My friend had a great attitude. I never heard him complain. He just kept doing the right thing, even though this supervisor would try to discredit him and make him look bad. This went on for several years. The supervisor was in his early 40s, been with the company almost 20 years. Looked like my friend would always have to deal with this. But one Monday morning, he went to work. The owner of the company called my friend in and said that the supervisor was leaving and this owner wanted him to have his position. My friend asked, when was this going to happen? When was he going to leave? The owner said he left last Friday. You're the supervisor starting right now. God knows how to cause people to hurry out of your way, to do things quickly, things that you didn't see coming. That supervisor could have been there another 30 years, but he suddenly left. Quit worrying about who's in front of you and how it's never going to work out. God can quickly change things, quickly promote you, quickly heal you, quickly free you. And yes, I know some things take time. We have to outlast what's coming against us. But you're going to come into these moments where God does a quick work. Now, instead of complaining, well, Joel, I don't know about for me. I don't think I'll ever get well. I'll never meet the right person. Don't turn it around. Father, thank you that my health is about to suddenly improve. Thank you that this addiction is not permanent. It's about to quickly turn around. Thank you that this depression is not how my story ends. It's about to hurry out of my way. That's not just being positive. That's releasing your faith. That's what allows God to speed things up. Pliability is an indication of experience. <laughs> when you've been through enough, you become pliable. You become adaptable. You become relatable. 
when you've been through enough, you know how to rock with it and you know how to roll with it and you know how to shift with it. When you've been through enough and enough has passed through you, you've changed in your composite that you might look like dirt, but you're pliable. Somebody write on the timeline, I'm pliable. I know how to abase and abound. I, I'm in season and out of season. I know how to survive good times and bad times. I know how to work with whatever's thrown at me. I can make it through the winter and I can make it through a hot summer. I'm pliable! If it rains, I got a raincoat. If it's hot, I'll take it all. I know how to be pliable. Whatever season I'm in, I can be content because I'm not just dirt, I'm clay. And this is the silent sermons of God. Can I preach this morning? I got up out of the bed this morning to bring you a word this morning. I got out, out, out of the bed to impart unto you that if enough has passed over you, And enough has plant been planted in you and enough has withered around you it has affected your ability to be to develop the elasticity that it takes to be a survivor let me hear from my survivors I want to hear from my survivors oh no 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 I don't want to hear from the Saints I want to hear from the survivors the Saints can talk later I I want to hear from the survivor. A lot has passed over you and you're still here. Survivors make some noise. Yes, yes. And so I thought I would start this sermon by talking about the potter's hand. For the potter's hand has reached down into the ground and extracted from the dirt the clay he thought most useful. And the reason I want you to see this image of the stooping potter is that when Jeremiah is looking at the potter stooping down into the ground to pull up the clay, my mind went back to God thing is, you know, I was raised in a culture of the quiet professional and we don't talk about what we do. And so that book, I mean, obviously I, I was writing a book with my, with my brother Leif Babin and we talked about that for a long time before we actually said, okay, let's do it. And, and the, what we knew that we needed to do was number one, represent the, 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 the SEAL teams the way that we thought they and knew they should be represented and also make sure that we point out that the SEAL teams are just one military organization of all the military who are out there risking their lives and making incredible sacrifices for this nation and for our freedom. And so we wrote heavily about the forces and the, the soldiers and Marines that we worked alongside of in the Battle of Ramadi. And
and and I think the other piece is you know from my from my brothers that are still in the SEAL teams you know when they started reading the book and, and the reason that I think it's been that it's accepted by within the SEAL community is because we didn't we didn't try and make ourselves out to be something that we weren't mm. um, you know the guy that's in that book that I me that's me that's what I was like when I was in the SEAL team that's what I was like now I didn't embellish anything or or and and you know you've read the book the book is not about how how great I was the book is actually a lot of it is actually about mistakes that I made and what I learned from it and what mistakes Leif made and what he learned from them and so that's why I think there was a little fear with that book in in how my brothers in the SEAL teams would react to it but once guys started reading it the feedback was awesome and so for the kids book I didn't did no fear at all none I, I'm writing what I want and I know that kids out there need it and discipline equals freedom same thing you, you know I'm doing I'm doing what what I want and and I'm putting word out there for people to the best of my ability to, to try and help them sort themselves out and move further along in their lives and and it's through lessons that I've learned because I've been you know far from I'm far from perfect and it's the same thing with my podcast you know my podcast is what I want to talk about and people have told given me all kinds of advice since the beginning on what I should do and shouldn't do and uh, I I always listen to people's advice but I I go with my gut of what I want to talk about what people I want to talk to, what events in history I want to cover. There's been people told me, don't make it too long, bring on guests so you're not you're not the only voice and don't talk about all this violence and horrible things and uh, if you listen to my podcast it's it's very long there's not many guests and i talk about some pretty awful and horrendous things that have happened in in the world so i'm i'm not afraid of of doing what i'm doing because i think i'm doing it for the right reasons 